This week, AMD introduces some CPUs in a cooler. AMD also reveals the world's first line of virtualized GPUs. Seagate gets hit with a class action lawsuit and more. I'm David Wolf with Tech Power of News. On February 2nd, AMD launched a pile of new goodies. Two CPUs and a fancy new cooler. The cooler named the AMD Wraith Cooler. It boasts a low amount of noise output, about 39 decibels. Quiet, kind of like a library. It should keep your new AMD CPU a bit more chilly with 34% more airflow and 24% more surface area to help dissipate heat than the previous block. It also looks kind of cool, pun very much intended, in the process, with some LEDs thrown in for good measure, because if your crap glows, then people will want it. This is the change that AMD really needed. Merle McIntosh said something rather interesting about this cooler. The Wraith model has attractive styling, with LED lighting that runs exceptionally quietly. Features we expect will impress our tech-savvy consumers. Merle McIntosh said this. Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Newegg. From what I can see, it's a cooler. No fancy new tech, no cool 3D vapor chambers or anything of the sort. It's a block of aluminum with standard copper heat pipes and a fan. They must really want AMD's crap out of their warehouses. We're not just talking about their new CPU cooler, though. AMD also introduced a pair of new CPUs, the AMD A10 7860K and Athlon X4 845, both offering a great value. The AMD A10 7860K is a 65 watt TDP APU with four CPU cores running at four gigahertz turbo and eight GPU cores with an integrated Radeon R7 at 757 megahertz, allowing users to play some popular online games such as Dota 2, League of Legends, and CSGO. This chip is also only $116.99 American dollars, so it's pretty efficient, it runs games pretty well, a nice offering for some light gaming on a budget. The second chip is the Athlon X4845, and it's the first desktop CPU based on AMD's x86 excavator architecture. The chip is clocked at 3.8 GHz and is AMD's highest instructions per clock performance yet on an x86 CPU, and is rated at 65 watts as well. A cool thing, haha, <laughs> about these chips, they're equipped with a 95 watt thermal solution, despite being 65 watt TDPs, giving the chips excellent cooling performance at a very low amount of noise. Nice! It seems AMD is keeping up its practice of throwing a huge amount of cores at its problems, according to a leaked kernel patch on LKML. AMD's upcoming Zen architecture may support up to 32 cores per socket, which is absolutely nuts. Based on some previous reports, we know that AMD designed the chips in groups of subunits containing four cores, each called a Zen quad-core unit, with the cores only sharing L3 cache. Using this info, TechFrag came to the conclusion that the Zen architecture could include up to eight of these quad-core units per core for a total of 32 freaking cores. This past Monday, AMD unveiled the absolute first hardware virtualized GPU products, the AMD FirePro S-series GPUs with multi-user GPU technology, which is called MXGPU. This new line of hardware adds GPUs to the list of virtualized components, on top of other important components like the G CPU, network controller, and storage devices, all to deliver the best possible user experience. The series offers two new models of cards, the 8GB Fire Pro S7150 and 16GB Fire Pro S7150 X2, with the S7150 able to push 16 simultaneous users and the X2 capable of twice as many at 32, which is kind of to be expected. The technology most people will care about, MXGPU, allows the GPU to produce reliable and secure performance from virtualized workstations. It seems Seagate's reputation for crappy hard drives has caught up with them. The company recently received a class action lawsuit accusing them of having unusually bad failure rates on its 1.5 terabyte and 3 terabyte drives, both internal and external models, while also falsely advertising dependability. Backblaze, a cloud solutions company, was the source of the data cited by the lawsuit. Their info shows three terabyte drives being three times more likely to fail, compared to a similar drive from Western Digital, and ten times more likely than Hitachi, based on percentage of failures. Hopefully this will give the company the kick in the pants to improve the quality of their devices, as the cat's been out of the bag for a long time now. I mean, just look at some of these comments. Also, Backblaze's reputation isn't the best, either. <laughs> That's all the news I have for this week, but there's more every week, so stick around. Also, make sure to check out our website and you'll find lots of great articles on stuff I talked about today and other stuff. Like NEC announces Multi-Sync PA322 UHD2 Ultra HD Monitor. 
ASUS announces B150i and B150M Pro Gaming Aura Series and Motherboards. Dell intros UltraSharp U2717D with Infinity Edge bezels and more. I understand that with just a few minutes of news you won't get all the info that you need, or you might have a question. Why don't you head on over to our forums and ask us that question? There's plenty of helpful people around to help you out. Did you watch this video and think, hey, I wanted game news? If I got the channel for you, check out our sister channel, Next Power Up. They got awesome game reviews and weekly gaming news. Clicky clicky.